This is a prerequisite lesson for those viewers who have little or no knowledge at all about object-oriented programming. So if you've written simple Java programs in the past, but get confused when you see more than one or two classes, this lesson is designed especially for you, so please don't skip it. Note, however, that I do expect you to already understand the basics of programming, such as loops and conditionals and methods. So if you don't know what those are, I'd recommend going to a website called CodingBat and getting some practice there. Now, that site is a great resource for getting practice on loops and conditionals in Java. All right, so this section is intended to provide you with just the right amount of knowledge regarding object orientation. There are some advanced topics we cover later in the course for which I'll present to you when the time is right, but this prerequisite section should give you a solid foundation about thinking in terms of objects. I use a very unconventional approach to teaching this, so if you've had trouble learning this concept in the past, you'll certainly get a new flavor from uh, the way I teach this topic. Now, if you're already aware of the difference between what an object is and what an interface is, feel free to skip this lesson. Okay, so coming over to object-oriented programming. It's all about the objects. Just like how objects behave in the real world, software objects have behavior too. Objects in software are what do all of the work in an application. For example, real-world objects, like cars, accelerate. People walk. People can also be considered as objects. Planes fly, fish swim, and the world goes round and round. Similarly, in software, we create objects that have particular behavior or function, and we ask those software objects to carry out that function. And as a result, our application runs as expected. So when the application is started, software objects come into existence, and they do all of the work in an application. So let's see an example. I'll show you how to create software objects using Java. And just follow along step by step as we go through this example. I'll be using Eclipse, which you can download from eclipse.org, but you can use pretty much any Java IDE or editor that you prefer. All right, so I've picked an example that we can all relate to. We are all human beings, and we carry out certain behavior on planet Earth. If you think about Earth as a software application, You'll be able to think of humans and other things in Earth as software objects performing actions. Of course, there's no way we can even begin to mirror the mastery of this beautiful universe through software, but I think this example will help you gain a deeper intuition about object-oriented programming. So let's create a tiny little world of humans. Now, the way it's going to work is you first need to create a class, and then we can use this class to create our actual objects that are going to do all of the work. So let's first create a human class. So I've already created this project, and you right-click there and you go to New Class. And we're going to create a class called Human. This class will allow us to create objects of type Human. Classes basically contain instructions for how objects should be created and how they should behave in the application. A class is basically a specification or a blueprint or a design of how humans are to be like in our application. So using this human class, we'll actually be able to create as many human objects in our tiny little world as we please. So let's define the characteristics humans in our software will have. We'll define some basic attributes to keep things simple. So Humans in our application are going to have a name. We can say that they will have an age. We'll give them a height in inches. And we'll also, let's give them an eye color. So with these fields defined, all objects that we create using this class are going to be are going to have attributes like age and height and inches, as well as eye color. Great. Now, rest assured that they will not have hair or ears or wings, because that is not part of this class, this specification. We could have defined those fields too, of course, but this is, of course, going to be a simple example for our tiny little world that we're creating here. All right, so moving along, we want humans to be able to do things in our application. So 
I'll define some basic behaviors such as speaking and eating and work and walk. So let's define these methods in this class. Humans will be able to speak. And in here, I'll just print out some statements that will basically give the values of each of these uh, particular fields. All right, so let's introduce ourselves. Hello, my name is, and then we can concatenate or append the name variable at the end of this statement. Similarly, I can print out the height in inches. Print out the age, and we'll also print the eye color. Similarly, let's define some other methods in this class. We'll make them eat. By the way, I'm using a, an Eclipse shortcut. When you type in sys out, like that, and then you hit the control uh, key and then you press space, it autofills the rest of the command for you. This is basically a print line statement to print to the console. And we'll just say he's eating. He'll also be able to walk. And we'll give him the ability to do work. All right, so now we're getting somewhere. All human objects in our application will be able to conduct these four basic behaviors. Now keep in mind that humans will not be able to, for example, sleep or swim because I have not defined those methods in this class. All our humans have the capability of doing is just speaking, eating, walking, and working, and that's it. That's what is in this specification for what a human is in our application. Now again, remember what I said about classes. Classes contain instructions for how objects can be created as well as how the objects carry out certain behavior. The methods that I've defined here are the instructions for how humans will behave. But we need a way to be able to create the actual human objects from this specification, sort of like a birth method or how humans will be born. And for that, we need to define a special method in this Java class. And that method is called the constructor. This special method is exactly what it sounds like. It provides a way to construct objects. And since this is a human class, it will help us create objects of type human. So let's define that method up here. And now notice I did call it a special method, and it truly is a special method. It doesn't have a return type. And it's a, the exact same name as the class name. So you want to keep in mind that constructor methods always have the same exact name as your class, as the class in which they belong in. And in reality, we don't even have to define this method explicitly like we have done here, because it comes by default for all classes in which a constructor is not defined. But uh, I wanted to leave it explicitly here so that you know what it looks like. So now that you know what the constructor method looks like, let's construct human objects. I'll create another class called Earth, in which we can uh, make these humans sort of come to life. And let me show you how that works. So you go to New, and you select Class. The name of this class is called Earth. And in this class, we're going to define a method called public static void main. Now hopefully you've seen this method before. If you've written simple Java programs with just one class, you've certainly seen this method. This method is the entry point for all Java applications. And code is executed sequentially, line by line, inside of this method. So first, we need a variable of type human. So let's define that. We'll call this variable Tom. Now right now, this is just a variable. We need to assign this variable a value. So we'll assign Tom the object. Tom is equal to new human. So this new keyword 
is the thing that is used when calling the constructor method to create a new object. So looking back at the human class, remember that we defined a special method called the constructor, which is the same exact name as the class name. And this method is used to construct human objects. So in our Earth class, I created a variable of type human, and then I'm assigning that variable a new human object. Right? So this is what is used to create objects in Java applications. Keep that syntax in mind if you haven't seen it already. All right, so Tom is a variable of type human, and we call the human's class's constructor. Now keep in mind that this Tom is just a variable. In reality, this is not really an object. Objects come into existence when the application starts up. Right now, we are just creating a structure, a way to organize our code, so when our application runs line by line, that's when uh, everything will happen. And an object will be created once the program is running. All right, so now that we have a, an object called Tom, we can make him speak. We're invoking the speak method on that object. So we're basically asking Tom to speak. Now when we run this, and you do that by right-clicking and going to run as Java application. Basically, the class with the main method in it should be the one where you right-click and hit Run As. And it will automatically give you the option of running as a Java application. So, right, so I ran that, and notice what it printed. Now let me remind you what that method looked like. Speak was printing out all of these things, and the, it was printing out the basically the variables, the values of the variables. And when we look at this, it's saying, hello, my name is Null. I am zero inches tall. I am zero years old and my eye color is null. Now the reason for why this, this is sort of an empty, all of these variables are empty, is because we're not assigning any of these fields. So let's assign these fields of Tom. Let's give him some values. So Tom should have an age, of course. We need to give him an age. We'll say he's five years old. Tom should have an eye color, and we'll say that his eyes are brown. We'll give him, what was that, height in inches? Yeah. And we'll make him a really tall baby. We'll say he's 72 inches tall. And uh, one more variable that's missing here is we need to, of course, give him a name. So we'll say his name is Tom. We'll say his last name is Sabo. Now when I run this, by the time it gets to here, Tom will already have his fields populated with these values. So we should expect to see the variables printing the actual value. So when I run this, you can also run it by hitting the play button here. And notice that those fields belonging to Tom, the Tom object, the human object rather, his fields are populated. Now let's create another object. Why don't you try this out on your own? Create an object called Joe and uh, give him some values and uh, call the speak method on, uh, on that object. And we'll continue in the next video.